Welcome to Lovejoy, where today we would like to demonstrate the proper installation procedures for the Lovejoy GS style curved jaw coupling. This installation video will show the basic procedures for installing this coupling. Please make sure you have access to the latest copy of the Lovejoy coupling installation guide when performing the installation of this coupling. This document can be found online at Lovejoy's website under installation instructions utilizing the resource tab. Prior to starting this installation, it is always important to ensure the equipment is in a safe and disabled state to prevent any accidental startup. Because of possible danger to the person working on the equipment, you should always consult all applicable federal, state, and local regulations covering the safe operation and maintenance of equipment. This includes, without limitation, the lockout-tagout procedure defined by OSHA. The following components are provided with the purchase of your Lovejoy GS clamp style curved jaw coupling. You should have two GS clamp style hubs and a GS spider. You may note that the GS spiders are similar to the curved jaw spiders except that the GS spiders have a closed or webbed center. Curved jaw spiders are color coded based on the shore hardness and torque capacity of the material. Always inspect the components to ensure the parts are the proper parts that you ordered. Review your application details to ensure that this is the proper coupling to accommodate your application requirements. If the shaft and the hub both have keyways, make sure you have the appropriate key ready to use when performing this installation. Ideally, the key should be the same length or slightly longer than the hub to transmit the maximum allowable torque. It is always recommended to keep a copy of the specific coupling installation guide readily available when installing your Lovejoy coupling. The installation guide contains charts that show the necessary details including allowable coupling misalignment and torque settings for tightening the set screws and bolts. Some installation guides may contain performance and dimensional information important when confirming the accuracy of the coupling selection. Let's look at the necessary tools we will need to perform this installation. A straight edge, a dial indicator, a calibrated torque wrench, Allen socket to fit the clamp screws, vernier calipers, a micrometer to confirm the shaft sizes, a fine tooth file, a strip of emery paper, non-flammable cleaning solvent, a clean cloth, lockout tagout kit, safety glasses, and rubberized gloves. Even though we have disconnected the power to this system, it is always a good idea to check and ensure that the power is off. When you receive the coupling, you should inspect each component to ensure that there are no visible defects, cracks, or damage from shipping. You may want to check the bore size for accuracy prior to continuing with the installation. If not done already, you should measure the shaft and ensure that the shaft diameter matches the coupling bore size. Then inspect the shaft and clean up any nicks or burrs from the keyway or shaft diameter. A fine tooth file can be used to clean burrs from the edge of the keyway or large dents in the shaft. The emery paper can be used to clear the shaft of rust or any fretting corrosion. Finally, using our cloth and cleaning solvent, we need to ensure the surface of the shaft and the keyway are clean and free of dirt. The hub should also be clean to remove any coatings used to protect them during shipping. Before installing the hub, place the key in the keyway on the shaft. The key should fit snugly into the keyway with no side-to-side -side movement. The end of the key should line up with both the end of the shaft and the hub. Please note that the Lovejoy curved jaw coupling hubs are manufactured with a clearance or slip fit and the hubs should slide onto the shafts with little or no difficulty. The clamp screws should be tightened to the recommended torque settings using a calibrated torque wrench. The use of a torque wrench is important. If the clamp screws are not tightened enough, the hub could work loose and slide on the shaft. If the clamp screws are too tight, they could damage the hub. We will tighten the clamp screws in one hub to the required torque 
and the second we will lightly tighten to allow for a minor adjustment after the equipment is moved into place. Next we will place the GS Spider into one of the curved jaw coupling hubs. The final shaft separation should be the same width as the Spider. The GS Spiders have web centers and neither shaft can extend into the center of the Spider. If the shaft separation needs to be a little more than the width of the Spider, then one hub can extend off of the shaft. The amount of hub engagement on the shaft should be equal to or greater than the diameter of the shaft. Now we will carefully move the equipment into place, bringing the hubs together until they barely touch the raised dots on the sides of the spider. Measure the width of the gap between the hub faces and compare this measurement with the G or gap dimension in the installation guide. Or you can measure the separation between the jaw of one hub and the face of the second hub and compare that measurement with the CL dimension in the installation guide. This dimension should match the installation document to within plus or minus 1 64th of an inch. At this time we will tighten the clamp screw in the second hub using a torque wrench. Lay a straight edge across the hubs to check the basic alignment. If all sides of the coupling are accessible, check the alignment at four locations, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 12 o'clock without rotating the shafts. The offset between the two hubs must be less than 1 64th of an inch to prevent damage to the coupling. The angular difference between the two hubs should be less than 1 degree for GS style spiders. If the alignment exceeds the allowable amount, realign the equipment to correct this condition. If using a dial indicator, mount the indicator on the driver shaft with the sensor touching the hub on the opposite shaft. Rotate the shaft with the indicator to the 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 12 o'clock positions and make notes of the deviation on the dial. If this exceeds 0.015 15 thousandths of an inch, adjust the equipment to correct this condition. When the installation is complete and the equipment is aligned to meet specifications, remove tooling and material away from the shafting and coupling. Double check the tightness of any screws or fasteners with a calibrated torque wrench, then prepare for testing. Install the appropriate coupling guard per OSHA requirements and remove the lockout tagout kit from the power supply. The equipment can then be started up and tested. The coupling and equipment should run smoothly. If vibration is detected, it could indicate that there is an issue with alignment or other problems. These could exist in the motor, coupling, or driven equipment and should be resolved prior to placing this coupling into operation. This concludes this particular installation video. We would like to thank you for your interest in Lovejoy Power Transmission products. Please feel free to visit the Lovejoy website for links to other videos and installation guides. You can also contact Lovejoy Customer Service at 630-852-0500. Lovejoy, building trust since 1900.